Hey guys, today we're going to explain interrupts at four different levels of complexity. We will start at the level of a noob, seeing what kicking might mean to an inexperienced player, and work our way up to see what interrupting is like for a pro. Maybe you've been told to just stop the sheep, or all you need to do is kick Chaos Bolt and win. While these can be true at times, Arena is never this black and white, and we're here to show you why. So stay tuned as we teach you four ways that different players understand kicking and why it matters for your gameplay. Oh yeah, and that's a good starting place. Remember that WoW is a game. Shocking, right? But really, just like any other competitive game, WoW PvP has what is known as game states. To make it simple, let's focus on the big ones, offense and defense. The offensive game state is when your team is in the driver's seat. This is when the kill target is low, you have the enemy healer in CC, and defensive CDs might not be available to stop your kill. On the flip side, the defensive state is when you are on the back foot. Someone on your team might be close to dying and your healer might be in CC or potentially out of mana. Throughout every arena game, both teams will pivot from one game state to another, sometimes in opposite directions where one team is playing offense while the other team plays D. Sometimes though, both teams are moving in the same direction and both playing defense, or even more exciting when both teams are playing offense, like when two cleaves are clashing it out blow for blow in the center of the arena. Whoa, did anyone else just see their screen flicker? But if these are the polar opposite game states, that means there is something in the middle, some other game state that is neither offensive or defensive. What is it? And more importantly, how does it matter for interrupts? Because as it turns out, this mysterious middle section is super important for understanding kicks. But let's come back to that later. Anyway, let's start things off by talking about kicking for a noob. Some of you might find this information too obvious, but if the following description applies to you, please subscribe to our channel immediately. The noob player obviously doesn't put that much thought into what spells they should interrupt. The game plan is simple, if there is a cast, kick it. Maybe this works for TSG at 1500, but not for everybody else. Part of this is because the noob doesn't understand game states. They don't know that their gameplay needs to change depending on what direction the game is headed. The noob doesn't realize that they can impact the outcome of a game by being selective with interrupts, and this can mean losing arena games without knowing why. Eventually, the noob learns though, and this starts with the most basic realization, that kicking can equal killing. Enter the challenger and rival player, where kicking is mostly based on one thing, being offensive. It doesn't take long for the average arena player to realize that pressure can be applied through interrupts. It is a simple formula, if you kick a healer, that means no heals. This is especially true in Wrath, where most healers have just one healing spell school, and the game is so fast that these healing lockouts actually matter. The formula then grows little by little. If you apply a kick, add in some damage, and throw in some lockdown, then you get infinitely more pressure than any one of those things by themselves. This type of interrupt mentality happens in the offensive game state. When your team is playing aggressive, you can apply even more pressure by locking out the healer with a kick in order to secure kills. The rival player might take it a step further and realize the healer isn't the only one who can be pressured by interrupts. Maybe the healer is already in CC, so what does the rival player do? They look to stop incoming CC from denying their kill attempts. Let's test your game knowledge to see how this works. In this clip, our RMP has decided that the enemy healer will be the kill target. The rogue manages to secure some stuns, and then we see this happen. His mage lands a full CS on the priest, and since this isn't Shadowlands, this means the priest can't do any healing for 8 seconds, but our rogue still has his kick available. So what should he be looking out for? Well, the enemy Rhett Paladin could off heal, but they are currently in a sheep. That leaves the enemy Boomkin, who's about to come out of a stun. Once this happens, they might try and peel with Cyclone or even off heal, which both could stop the kill. Fortunately, our rogue spots this and denies the Cyclone with a kick. This means his team can continue doing uninterrupted damage on the priest, who is still suffering from the CS lockout, but with this kick, they secure the kill. What many players should also eventually realize is that their aggressive interrupts scale based on missing HP. The lower the kill target, the more value any interrupt becomes, whether it is on the healer or on an off target. Check out this interrupt here. Our warrior lands his pummel on the paladin while their partner is already low on HP. And while this doesn't convert to a kill, the interrupt is infinitely more effective since it was done while the kill target was already low on HP. In any case, understanding how interrupts can work in this offensive game state is just one part of the equation. What we have commonly seen in our thousands of hours of VOD analysis is that most players focus on using kicks to build pressure on offense. But remember, the pendulum eventually swings to the other side with the game state eventually entering defense, and that requires a whole new approach to interrupts. 
This is where we enter the third level of kicks, which is commonly used by duelist and gladiator level players. At this level, players have already mastered interrupting for pressure. That part was easy. What is slightly harder is knowing how and when to interrupt when the game state enters defense. Remember, this is when your team is playing on the back foot. You're no longer in full control, and the enemy team might be the ones about to run you over if you don't interrupt an important spell. In Wrath, swapping game states can happen in a split second. With damage being so high, win conditions can arise out of thin air, and good casters will constantly look to exploit bad positioning. Take this moment here. The enemy druid is at 75% HP in the center of the map, but does their teammate know how much trouble they're actually in? Let's assess the situation. We can tell the druid has flame shock while the shaman is casting lava burst, meaning it is guaranteed to crit. They also have elemental mastery and rocket gloves ready, indicating that there could be more damage on the way. Despite all of this, the DK is intent on tunneling the paladin who has instant heals and is sitting comfortably on HP. Can you guess what is about to happen? Well, this is what happens. As you can see, despite being high on HP, the druid dies in a single spell cast just from being out of position. If we rewind to where this interaction started, all the DK needed to do was stop this lava burst cast and the kill would have never happened. There are a handful of spells in Wrath that are high impact and can easily spiral into losses, sometimes even instantly. These include Lava Burst on a target with Flame Shock, Chaos Bolt especially when there is an active Immolate, and Frost Bolt if the mage also has Fingers of Frost and Brain Freeze active. All of these can be lethal spells and deal a considerable amount of damage in a short period of time, making them vital to interrupt during any defensive game state. There can also be less obvious forms of lethal damage worth kicking. Take for instance Gargoyle from Unholy DKs. Individually, each cast might not hit that hard, but when combined with DK damage and lockdown, subsequent casts can start to really hurt. By simply interrupting the Gargoyle, the game state starts to become more stable. Interrupting lethal damage should be a no-brainer, but what is often overlooked is stopping CC from landing on your healer, especially when it is unavoidable. Take the infamous deep sheep combo. Most mages won't try and sheep healers out of thin air, but instead use other forms of lockdown to make the CC chain more guaranteed. As a DPS, it becomes your responsibility to deny the sheep from landing by using an interrupt. But if that isn't possible in the moment, your next course of action is to stop any follow-up CC casts. This can mean the subsequent polymorph from the mage, or even other external casts like fear if the mage is playing with a warlock, or cyclone if a druid is involved. In both cases, by either stopping the initial or follow-up CC, you prevent the game from spiraling out of control. The very best players, like Vinruki here, will often combine both offensive and defensive interrupts within the same game, jumping between game states instantly. His healer is currently stuck in a polymorph, with a follow-up cast about to land. Knowing the game could spiral out of control if this happens, Vinruki lands a CS on the enemy mage, which allows his healer to apply Fear Ward in order to push into the enemy team. Then, with the arcane lockout still active on the mage, Ven deep freezes the enemy healer in order to land a sheep of his own, which cannot be interrupted by a CS or a polymorph from the enemy mage. Now Venruki's team is the one in the driver's seat, and if we skip ahead a bit more, we can see that Ven also manages to land a full CS on the enemy priest while the rogue is stuck in the open with no cloak of shadows. This should demonstrate how quickly game states can change, and how interrupts can be a pivot point for that change to actually happen. By stopping a follow-up polymorph early on in the game, Ven was able to play according to the defensive game state, and then capitalize on the lockout to convert the moment into an offensive game state for his team, eventually securing the kill with an uninterrupted polymorph on the enemy priest. And if you're a rival saying, hold up, rewind, I kick like this too, well, yes, you probably do, but do you do it as consistently and as fast as duelist and gladiator players? Probably not. You see, as we will discover, once you start going up in rating, better players become better at interrupting for every game state. And by now, it should be clear how interrupting changes depending on the state of the game. And by landing an interrupt during key moments, you can actually change the direction of the game is headed. But remember what we said earlier, that there is a mysterious middle ground between both game states. As it turns out, interrupting matters here too, and this is something that the best players recognize. But isn't it crazy how rank 1s and even BlizzCon champions just do things in their own gameplay that most players can understand? That's what over half a million PvPers have realized by using skill cap for over a decade. Our website features class courses that are designed by pro players but are easy for you to understand. You can learn things like how to deal maximum damage, or how to counter your enemies, and much more by relying on information from the most knowledgeable players around. We even feature arena commentaries where rank 1 gladiators or even the pros will walk you through your toughest matchups. Our service comes equipped with a money back guarantee, meaning that we are daring you to gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. See why others have already started to get ahead of the competition and start unlocking your true potential today using the discount link below. Anyway, now it's finally time to go to the last level of interrupts. This is where things start to get abstract. 
Most players understand offensive and defensive game states because they are the most obvious, but sandwiched in between them is something very complex, and if you have played other games, you might already know this concept as the neutral game. In Arena, playing neutral is when neither team has a clear advantage. Nobody is explicitly playing offense or defense, but instead trying to find openings to set up a kill, while also being on the lookout for the opposing team to set up theirs. A good example of this would be mages, who often use this time to spam polymorph the enemy DPS, or to fish for damage procs by using rank 1 frostbolt while they wait for DRs to reset. The question becomes, should these casts be interrupted? Sometimes, interrupting a polymorph in these situations can be a massive bait. If a mage manages to soak a kick before their deep freeze comes off cooldown, they now have a more guaranteed opening to start a CC chain. On top of that, using a kick into a random poly might even be pointless if the kicker is playing with a priest, paladin, or even a warlock who could dispel the polymorph anyway. At the same time, however, these in-between kicks can be worth it if and only if they can be converted into an offensive advantage or if they can prevent the enemy team from gaining momentum. In fact, stopping momentum from happening is one of the best ways to understand neutral kicking, and there are a handful of spells worth interrupting because of their ability to eventually overwhelm the enemy team. On top of Polymorph, the most obvious examples include both Unstable Affliction and Vampiric Touch. While neither of these spells will be immediately lethal, they can eventually lead to overwhelming damage. In this clip, we will see a few examples of the neutral kick in action by seeing how some of the best players of all time deny the enemy warlock from ever pushing an advantage. Here we have the first interrupt, which is on a UA cast. Now you might be asking one question, why didn't Snuts interrupt the pally instead, who is currently hard casting flash of lights in the background? Well, remember that UA is the main win condition of the enemy affliction warlock. Even though his team is high on HP, they still have the potential to lose from this position if this cast is allowed to go off. On top of that, the lockout of wind shear is so short that interrupting the Paladin might not actually do anything. Snuts' kick is chained with a fear from Channel while the game advances forward from this neutral state. Then we have our second interrupt on UA, again denying the enemy warlock from ever getting momentum started. Again, the game advances forward in the neutral position as both players look to harass this poor lock, with Channel and Snuts chaining both a fear and hex together to deny the warlock from ever gaining momentum. This might seem incredibly annoying, but pro players abuse this neutral interrupt all the time. They are able to employ all three types of interrupts, going for offensive kicks to close out games, defensive kicks to stop kills, and then neutral kicks to stall the game and prevent the enemy team from gaining an advantage. Shamans in particular are one of the best classes for utilizing the neutral kick, since Wind Shear has such a short cooldown and really doesn't swing the game too far in any direction. Instead, elemental shamans are built around neutral interactions and have a slew of mechanics that are designed to be annoying and disruptive, and this, in turns, allows them to play more passively in neutral. Coincidentally, this is also what makes our RMP very frustrating to play against as a shaman, because they stop you from being the neutral brick wall that could stop them, if it wasn't for their pesky cross CC of course. And again, if you are a rival or glad player screaming, I neutral kick too, well you're probably right. But remember, the higher you climb in rating, the better and more consistent people get at kicking in every type of game state. Let's make one thing clear however, the neutral game is really hard to truly understand, and most players don't actually think about it at all, but is something every truly great player understands. If you were coming to this video wanting a long list of spells to interrupt, then that signals that you might not even understand how game states work in WoW Arena. Once again, PvP is never black and white, but shades of grey. But once you start to understand game states, you can start making better decisions with your interrupts. Anyway guys, we hope you learned a lot today. Let us know in the comments below if you like this style of video and suggest any topic you want to see next. Also, if you are new here, we are constantly pumping out content for everything related to WoW PvP, so subscribe if you want to see more, and consider checking out skillcap.com where you can find hundreds of guides designed by pros that teach you everything you need to know about WoW Arena. We are the only service that dares you to gain over 400 rating guaranteed while using our website or your money back, so use the discount code below if you want to start your own journey. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, see you soon.